Hello and welcome back. If you are diving into the world of digital design, you have probably encountered the nifty storage structure called FIFO. First in, first out. Mastering the art of verifying their correctness using formal methods is a nice skill to have. In my last video, I broke down a method where we used formal methods to track two arbitrary entries in the FIFO. Today, I will discuss a more efficient approach by tracking just one entry. I believe most of the things can be explained using simple real life examples. So let's take a break from all the tech jargon like FIFO and formal verification. Instead, imagine a line of people waiting to get into an awesome event. Now picture my buddy Dawn jumping into this queue at some random point. <clears throat> my mission to predict exactly when Dawn will reach the end of the queue and check if it's um, if I'm right. If I nail this prediction, I can apply the same method to make sure that anyone who gets into the queue gets out of the queue in on time. Sounds simple, right? Let's uh, look at the examples. Initially, the queue is going to be empty. And to make it more interesting, uh, let's say three people, three random people got into the queue. Let's call them blues and then Dawn gets into the queue and eventually uh, three blues would go out and when that happens I'm expecting D to go out of the queue, Dawn to go, come out of the queue. Now how do I figure out uh, that everybody in front of Dawn has gone out of the queue? Before we uh, see how we can do that to make it even more interesting, uh, let's say three, four reds got into the queue after Dawn gets into the queue. Now, imagine uh, Dawn hops into the queue and if I had a count of people uh, ahead of him, I could easily decrement that count when those people come out of the queue and then figure out exactly when dawn is going to come out based on that particular count pretty neat right but how do we design that counter this is how we could do that initially the counter there is nobody in the queue so that the special counter is zero three blues gets into the queue and the counter becomes three now dawn gets into the queue and counter becomes four so until this point it's simply the number of people in the queue but from this point onwards, it changes. Some uh, more people, let's call them reds, four reds go, in, go into the queue. Do we really want to count those people? Um, so as far as uh, Don is concerned, there are three people ahead of him, plus one, including that, there are four people. Now, we don't care how many reds or how many people came after Don. So we don't want to increment this counter. That's the increment part. Now, how do we decrement? When, whenever somebody comes out of the queue, it gets decremented by that many counts. So I'm just keeping some cycles here. So from four, uh, it three people came out. So four minus three becomes one. Now, when the counter becomes one, the next person who's going to come out has to be done. And that's my check. When the counter becomes one in the next cycle, Dawn is going to come out. Let's come back to the FIFO example now. Let's consider a very simple FIFO. I'm just showing the read and write enables. And this is write enable, and this is read enable, and this is data input to the FIFO, this is data output to the FIFO. There is a clock and reset to the FIFO, and there are empty FIFO, empty FIFO full signals coming out of this FIFO. We are not interested in them at this uh, in this discussion, so I'm not showing them here. Uh, so we have seen everything until this point. So the new part is just the code. The counter that I discussed is incremented and decremented by two signals. It's called increment count and decrement count. They depend on two other signals, sampled in and sampled out. Let's look at the sampled in part. So this signal sampled in, this is a sticky flag. When I say sticky flag, this is something that gets set 
and never gets reset until the system is reset in this case FIFO is reset so um, uh, this <coughs> when does it get set it gets set in the next cycle uh, after this particular signal sample in is set and this is this is the one that gets set when dawn gets into the queue so when d in becomes d capital d uh, which is the way i'm representing dawn and then there is increment count increment count simply means uh, that there is a write enable in the fifo uh, that means uh, actually this is one cycle before sample in gets set one cycle before uh, when dean is waiting the next person who is going to get into the queue is dawn and then write enable for dawn is high and then a some a random symbol i'll come i'll explain why this is required for the moment let's just say when dawn is about to get into the queue with right enable high sample in is going to get set going to get set and in the next cycle sample in is going to get set and and that's it and when do we decrement the counter we decrement the counter uh, when a read happened from the fifo and then sampled out is not set there's a similar sticky flag similar to sample in uh, that's used in the decrement count part and this <clears throat> this particular signal sample out which is deciding sampled out is designed like this when the counter is one and sampled in was set, the sticky flag sampled in is high that means sometime in the past uh, d got in and then a decrement count and there is a read happening from the FIFO which is exactly uh, at this cycle so in the next cycle uh, d out should be d so sample out implies in the next cycle d out should be d that means when the counter is becoming one in the next cycle that data coming out of the FIFO should be d capital d there are two things uh, to notice which is which are shown in d which is shown in red uh, these are called symbolic variables this is a very critical part of any formal verification most of the formal verification uh, benches that you would write uh, this ensures the randomness of the check so in this particular case we are saying that uh, if we uh, take a specific value let's say one tick b1 or like tick d32 then we are ensuring that there is no bug in the FIFO when the data is exactly equal to tick d32 or like 33 whatever now we want to make this check more generic we want to make sure that uh, this works for any data so we take assign d in to be a symbolic variable called capital d and this capital d can take any put legal value if the data allowed in the fifo is uh, of six bits then it can take any value from 0 to 63. what is this uh, sample symbol now let's say uh, we verified that uh, there is no bug um, <clears throat> when d comes for the first time if we did not have sample symbol sampling would go high whenever this capital d comes for the first time uh, what if uh, the FIFO works okay when that happens d comes for the first time and it doesn't work correctly uh, that means let's say d got in for the second time but it never comes out then if it did not have a randomness a random symbol which can take uh, random symbolic variable which can take any value we wouldn't check the second occurrence so for example uh, since sample symbol the symbolic variable can take any value uh, the width if there is a bug in the second occurrence of d then it can give us a failure trace uh, by uh, taking a value zero for the symbolic variable when d comes for the first time and taking value one when d comes for the second time then this check will be checking the second occurrence of d so that makes it uh, this check more generic uh, in the sense that it checks for any possible input data at any possible time i hope you enjoyed the video if you found, find the con content interesting 
Uh, don't forget to check out other formal verification videos I posted in this channel. I plan to post more interesting formal verification videos in the future sessions. Uh, subscribe to the channel to get the notifications on time. Take care. Thank you. Bye now.